welcome to So French, the show about the twists and turns, intrigues and insights to all things French. Every two weeks, we select the best, most interesting and fascinating of French news stories, all brought to you from a studio in the heart of Paris. My name is Stefan Vries. And my name is Sarah Bertelsson. And this week, the French president was under fire once again for his contempt towards the working class and the unemployed. But it's just straight talk, say his defenders. And the thriller-like case of the killing of one of France's richest women uh, came up in court this week. And we're having a glass of champagne, or two. But first, one uh, Fran- French president Emmanuel Macron's closest security officer, he's even be called, been called Macron's bodyguard. He has been defending himself before the uh, a Senate inquiry this week, um, saying he was neither a police officer nor a real bodyguard. What's this all about, Stefan? Yeah, well, this is the scandal that broke uh, this uh, summer, actually, revelations by the newspaper Le Monde in uh, in July. Uh, it became, just before the summer break. Yeah, just before the summer break. And just a couple of days after France became the world champion of football. We've already forgotten that, but... The celebrations didn't last very long. No, indeed. <laughs> um, they were disturbed by Alexandre Benalla, and the case is uh, now called the Benalla case. Alexandre Benalla was in charge of the president's security. Yeah, it all started when the French media published a video uh, seeing Benalla manhandling protesters during a police-led crowd control operation in May last year. Um, and the thing is that he is not a police officer, so he was not allowed to interfere. But especially he was wearing some kind of riot gear equipment. when while Yeah, he, he looked was... like a police officer. Yes, and, very much so. And acting like a police officer yeah. or i don't know someone in the security and that's a criminal offense in france if you pretend being a police officer but he was also the closest aide of uh, emmanuel macron um and then um well of course a lot of people were upset that uh, a close aide of macron was beating up people in the, in the streets of paris uh, macron in the beginning said it was just a storm in a teacup but actually became quite serious it was a parliamentary inquiry and, and it got yeah Benalla it got worse also because of the fact that you know this video apparently it was no this this whole incident was known to the elise uh, but the only punishment that was given to benalla was uh, a couple of weeks of suspension and he wasn't fired until after this whole scandal broke and after media started talking about it. So that also created this idea that maybe uh, not only Benalla was protecting uh, Macron, but also that Macron and the Élysée was trying to protect uh, Benalla. Exactly. And now the Senate was organizing a hearing. And first Benalla didn't want to come last week. He said, uh, "I do the, the Senate... Uh, they're just a bunch of clowns or <laughs> something the president like is, a, is a marquess or something like that. Petit marquis. A petit marquis. Um, and, but then finally the Senate said, well, you, you know, you, if you are summoned to come at this hearing, we can send the police and bring you in. <laughs> so he went. <laughs> he went indeed uh, this week, uh, very early in the but morning. But it was an interesting hearing, I mean, I must say, because, you know, we have heard over the last couple of months uh, this talk about Alexandre Benalla being some kind of um, kind of rough guy and we also all everybody's seen these images of him you know punching protesters and there he was this week in a suit and a tie looking very tidy speaking very clearly and uh, you know articulately uh, about uh, and answering all the questions and even starting by actually apologizing to yeah. the head of this <laughs> inquiry. And yeah, saying, absolutely. I shouldn't have asked, I shouldn't have called you a petit marquis. <laughs> he wasn't nice. He, uh, he looked like, uh, he looked and spoke like an ideal son-in-law. Uh, he's only 27 years old, that huh? should be said as well. Um, and the most interesting thing is that he said that he wasn't the bodyguard because for the, over the past two months, all the media and also politicians have been calling him Macron's bodyguard, but actually he wasn't, well, according to his own uh, declarations. But he's, of course, in a very difficult position because he needs to, um, he broke the law, that's that's for sure. Um, He needs to protect the president, so he cannot really uh, say anything that will incriminate the president. Uh, But he 
also needs to defend himself. So he's in a very difficult position. Um, but and he had some good media training, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Before because today, he was very before arrogant this week last too. week, and now suddenly, all of a sudden, he was very uh, polite and 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 you know reflective. So absolutely, he has he's had some media training uh, that that shows. So the legal investigation is still going on into what the, he did. It, Exactly, and what was his role in the Elysee? Because it's still not known what was his job. He said this week he was not a bodyguard, but he didn't say what he he was. Well, he said I was in charge of coordinating the security at the Elysee Palace. Um, but he was also, and it's really strange, he was in the bus with the French national team when they were parading on this Champs Elysee. Uh, he was in in front of the bus. Um, so what was he doing with the national football team uh, when he was already supposed to be suspended? So it's it's very strange. A lot of there questions. There are a lot are... of questions asked, and I mean, some of the police are. I mean, there is a very strict protocol for the the, the protection of uh, the president of France, of course, and the unions for the for the police and the the, the gendarmes who are in charge of this. They are very uh, suspicious as well about, uh, regarding Benalla's position and. Uh, and job because they say that you know we knew nothing about i mean he wasn't part of our, our organization no he's a um, civilian exactly yeah but still he came in on certain missions and acted on behalf of the elysee and this of course became a very complicated situation for for those who are actually in charge of his of the president's security so uh, there are a lot of uh, questions one of the main issues uh, during this uh, senate senate inquiry was of course the question of him wearing uh, a gun yeah because he had uh, asked for the permission and gotten a permission authorization to wear a gun and that is, that's also where the the story is actually uh, diverse because you have ben Alain now saying that he was wearing his prote this arm uh, this gun for his own protection is yeah. because he was under threat we're not quite sure from whom or well, why so there was the banana case this summer and then um, a couple of weeks ago the resignation of Nicolas Hulot the very popular environment minister we talked about him in our last episode and then this week another minister said he was going to leave Gérard Collomb the home minister uh, he said that he wants to be the mayor of Lyon again he's already 71 years old I don't know how much that is bad news for Emmanuel Macron, though, because well, I'm not sure that, <laughs> that Colomb is one of the government's most popular. Uh, that's persons. true, but Colomb is, of course, uh, is one of the uh, uh, most loyal allies of Macron. He was one of the first to campaign for Macron. So if he's leaving, uh, and there's his Benalla case and Nicolas Hulot, it shows that there's really something going on at the Elysee Palace. Um, so all these incidents are really affecting Emmanuel Macron's. Uh, position um, but the president himself is not helping himself either because he cannot shut his mouth now stefan i don't know what would you do if you were looking for a job well i've learned this week that i it's very easy to find a job in france where only three million people are looking for jobs but apparently you just have to cross the street yes this according to the French president himself, Emmanuel Macron. So this was a conversation, I don't know, um, An exchange, exchange. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Emmanuel Macron had with a young man uh, trained as a gardener, I um, must say, who uh, approached Emmanuel Macron uh, and uh, said, you know, uh, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm a trained gardener. I'm looking for a job, but I can't find one. Uh, what, what do you do to help someone like me? And this is what Emmanuel Macron had to say. Dans l'hôtellerie, le café, la restauration. Dans le bâtiment, il n'y a pas un endroit où je vais, me dise pas qu'ils cherchent des gens. Hôtel, café, restaurant. Je, je, je traverse la rue, je vous en trouve. Il y a simplement des gens qui sont prêts à travailler avec les contraintes du métier. Oui, oui, oui. Yeah, so this was Macron saying, if you're motivated in hotels, cafes, restaurants and construction, everywhere I go, people tell me that they're looking to hire. If I cross the street, I'll find you work. So that's easy. And right? that and that went down well with the French public, didn't it? No, not at all. Um no, people found this really an illustration of his arrogance and the fact that he's disconnected to society. But actually it also led to a lot of very funny uh, things online, uh, of course. Absolutely. Uh, it's been the really the laugh of the week, I must say, because the people got very very creative. 
Very, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, of course, uh, the, one of the most posted images was the famous cover of the album of the Beatles on Abbey, Abbey Road, Road yeah. uh, with the, just the subtitle of four people, <laughs> four young men, <laughs> four young men looking for a job, uh, of course, crossing the road. Um, yeah, it was really funny. Um, the, the road sign for a, a pedestrian crossing was transformed into the new logo of the unemployment office. Um, the people got really creative. Um, yeah, but of course, people got very, very upset as well about this because, you know, this goes, it wasn't the first time that Emmanuel Macron uh, has been talking quite uh, strongly, uh, using quite strong and, you know, direct speech um, to, to people that he crosses in the streets or, you know, that tries to approach him. Uh, we all remember, don't call me Manu. Yeah. Uh, for example, about the young student who, who said, hey, you know, the short for Emmanuel. And he was immediately um, corrected. Yeah. And he said, you know, young man, call me Emmanuel uh, Macron. Monsieur le Président, maybe he said. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Earlier this summer, we also had uh, Emmanuel Macron saying that uh, France is, uh, you know, throwing crazy amounts of cash into the social uh, security system but it still doesn't help people so you know it's 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 a uh, what do we say it's it's been a, a couple of these incidents what to say and you know people are a bit divided over how to react to it some are saying that this is just a well the supporters of course are saying that this is just straight talk and you know this is the how truth. people this, yeah. it's the truth and you know yeah. he 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 knows what he's talking about and people wants to hear this kind of talk from the president he's not just a uh, beau parleur, as you would say in French, you know, nice, a smooth talker. Yeah, absolutely. It, it shows uh, he may have a point about the jobs in the restoration because a lot of hotels and restaurants are looking for people, but the wages are very bad. The hours are very uh, long or irregular. So it's it's a tough job. So not, not a lot of people. And I also heard someone saying, you know, that uh, someone who's trained as a gardener to go work as a waiter in a restaurant that's a no win situation it's a lose yeah. lose situation for everyone because people should not be in positions where that neither neither trained for or they don't want to be there either so i mean the ideal thing would be to try to change the country so that they actually train people for uh, for the jobs that are available but that's a structural structural issue and not an individual question so this new language incident added to the image of a very arrogant president um, and it's not doing him any good uh, in the ratings um, and well the funniest joke actually was also made this week uh, because alexandre ben -Alain, here he is again he declared in the senate hearing that he was now unemployed <laughs> yes. so a lot of people <laughs> tweeted just cross the street <laughs> écouter So French. You are listening to So French. Now, if you like shopping and you like Emmanuel Macron, there's a Good way to join these two interests in one, right, Stefan? Absolutely, because the Elysee, the presidential palace, opened a Macron fan store this week online. Uh, that's not the official name, but <laughs> let's call it this way, because they sell all kinds of goodies, ranging from mugs with a photo of the French president to T-shirts with slogans of Macron and even collar plates with Brigitte Macron on Do they it. have the Don't Call Me Manu? Uh, no, but the, uh, you can order them probably now on other websites because there are already a lot of websites making fun of the store. And they don't have the only just across the street either, I assume? Yeah, I think you can order it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and of course, all these products are made in France, bien sûr. Um, and it is inspired by the official White House gift shop that opened already in 1946 in Washington. Um, but actually, the French store that opened this week is... Uh, well, it's it's more a personal cult shop of Emmanuel Macron. Uh, have you been on the site? Have you, did you see? Uh, yeah, the, I saw. I saw the. Really, there's a T-shirt with Première Dame or First Lady, and that will set you back f fifty-five euros. Cheap to become the First Lady, though. Yeah, absolutely for fifty-five euros, but it's expensive for just a T-shirt. Um, but it was actually a success in the. 